What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, March 12th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, solar panel suppliers linked to allege abuses in China imperil U.S. climate goal. You absolutely hate to see it. Bank of America, or next up, Bank of America set to expand its energy transition business. Next up, the obscene energy demands of AI. Ooh, slip a little AI in there. Gotta love it. Finally, in the news segment, SEC climate disclosure rules face legal gauntlet. This is a really important story about what's what, 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 what the SEC just announced with a lot of these climate targets. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas finance markets. We did see um, overall markets drop a little bit today, um, but the big news out of the oil patch is the EQT and Equitrans merger. Um, remember, this was a former EQT company that were or subsidiary that was spun out and now rolled back in, you know, uh, we'll we'll cover a little bit on what's uh, what what kind of some of the reaction is on that, and then we'll let you guys get on a he- get on out of here, back to work, and start your day. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Go ahead and kick us off, my friend. Hey, let's get rolling around to our buddies over there in China. Uh, solar panel supplier links to alleged abuses in China imperil U.S. climate goal. Michael, if you're going to be an energy hypocrisy giant, you might as well start rolling out some serious solar panels. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, Miss Producer. If you could slide in the graphic that's titled U.S. Solar Panel Imports During Q2 of 21. Michael, let's take a look at this. The fi- the top five market or 79% of our uh, panels come from China. Yeah. Look at that. That's just nuts. It's pretty big. Um, and the rest and, of the world only gets 21%. Yes. So when you sit back and take a look, holy smokes. Now let's go down to the next chart. Largest owners of planned U S solar po- projects from 2020, 2021 to 2025 next era. Look at that bad dog. We're talking 10,000, uh, almost 11,000 kilowatt hours of solar going in. Um, and you take a look at all those, all of those companies are supporting, uh, humanity abuse as far as I'm concerned without Mm -hmm. having some kind of, uh, program in place. Here's a quote out of it. The lack of transparency in China in the deserved skepticism that some have towards documentation provided by Chinese companies adds on an element of uncertainty that's difficult to remove or solve. These humanity abuses on these folks are just horrific. Yeah, it's 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 becoming hard to say solar is ESG. You can't really it, say that not- that. You exactly you can't, especially when you see data like this. So I think the the sheen is coming off. I think that's you know probably why you see people shifting into wind because they're we're still waiting for the wind. We'll find out about where these wind fall. I'm sure the wind manufacturers are getting abused too. I'm sure. I'm sure it's all it, bad. It, uh, yeah, it, but the the sad part about the offshore wind is it's killing the whales. Let's see, kill the people, kill the whales. You know my stance on whales. Kill them Uh, all. What's next? (laughs) You kill me, Michael. Okay. Bank of America set to expand its energy transition business. Um, First off, I don't bank at Bank of America. uh, And we'll just go right on into the story here. And uh, the U.S. banking giant is already expanding its exposure to power and natural gas markets and in trading environment. Here's a quote down in here. I thought that you would find this interesting. It says uh, natural gas gas is seen as a transition fuel by the bank of America and the bank is betting on gas trading too, according to Brett Orlando, managing director and global head of commodities uh, transition at bank of America. Michael, they finally have said, Oh, it's a transition fuel. Mm -hmm. Mm 
I got some news for him. <clears throat> it's going to be around a little while. <laughs> that transition. I believe uh, Secretary Yellen said mm, inflation's transitory. <laughs> wow. We're going to. I mean, it's. I, do I trust? Do I think Bank of America is going to have an insane carbon business? No, I don't think so. Now, could they make money trading power and natural gas? Uh, they probably will. I mean, it can be a lucrative market, specifically if you have the resources like Bank of America um, does. But you know, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't bet on this desk being terribly profitable over the next couple no. of years. The carbon desk, I bet, isn't too profitable. No. And here it goes. The bank will also impose restrictions for new energy clients engaged in expansion of oil and gas, as well as restrictions on non-diversified energy clients. This becomes a investing in energy hypocrisy mix is it's OK to dabble in energy because you can say natural gas is a uh, transitory uh, fuel. But, Michael, when you drill for natural gas, you normally get a lot of oil or vice versa. It depends on the well. But they kind of go hand in hand, don't they? Yeah, I know. They, it does, they do go hand in hand. So I don't know what to tell you. What's next? <laughs> don't know. The obscene energy demands of AI. Um, you know, you got to love a good story like this. Um, when we sit back and take a look, there's a fundamental mismatch between this technology and environmental sustainability, said Devi uh, Devires, uh, Devires, I'm hoping, uh, the world's most prominent AI cheerleader, Sam Altman, the CEO of Open and I, says, quote, I think we still don't appreciate the energy needs of this technology. Really? <laughs> Why are all these gigantic server farms being built? And he says, we don't really understand. I think you're going to need every single bit of storage that you're going to need in server. Uh, we yeah, need if AI is going fusion. to become the thing of the future, <laughs> it takes an incredible amount of power to train these models, to deploy these models. Data center is going to have to expand. As long as NVIDIA stock chart is pointed like this yep you're gonna see power go through the roof so it's yep. always a catch-22 with these people oh we're gonna we're gonna transition oh well now okay. we're gonna need this again whoops and and now the iea the international energy agency announced that energy related global co2 emissions rose yet again <laughs> of course <laughs> data centers for now are at least a small part but they are increasing in percentages <laughs> yeah so now i think if you you know i think a lot of the bitcoin community would tell you it's you know <laughs> deploying these type of solutions you know deploying bitcoin into coin crypto mining is a way to solve this by taking I would agree. all of to taking you yeah. know so there, there's another side to this, but it is it is there's hilarious how there, everything needs to go AI. Well, we're going to need more power. There is a difference between a data center and cryptocurrency data mining. There is a significant difference because I am a Bitcoin fan for this one big, huge reason. Bitcoin mining when used with EMP operators allows them to use stranded natural gas, stranded energy that would have been wasted and then provide revenue to deliver lower cost energy to the consumers. I love me Bitcoin mining when used properly. Well, it's a better revenue source for operators who, Absolutely. you know, especially when you have the arbitrage opportunity that right now with natural gas at a dollar 70 and and bitcoin at, at whatever it is 70 thousand or whatever so um but no in terms of of the power needs for ai it's only going to go up so you know <laughs> everyone was talking about oil and gas demand is going away sam altman says no 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 no, no. there was one comment buried in that article that says well maybe ai could figure out how to use less energy <laughs> i'm like what 
Okay. Just, I hope the AI drives that person off a cliff. That was not, he was, he was already removed from all investor relations, uh, job opportunities. He now no investor job for you, man. Okay. SEC climate disclosure rule faces legal gauntlet. This just drives me nuts. Quote, the SEC tried hard to mollify corporate America on how expensive this would be, but there are enough companies and enough states who hate the idea of capital markets regulatory taking an action taking on climate action role, said David Zhang, professor at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business. Um, you cannot understand when uh, the they're trying the landmark uh, securities commission rule approved last week by three to two drew immediate legal challenges. Yeah, it, I mean, shout out to Texas for for, you know, this is led by Texas and Paxton down here. He's the one leading the charge on all this. It really is interesting what's. Well, I mean, these rules are fairly crippling. I mean, you fairly. know, but, but, yeah, 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 fairly, I guess, is the wrong, <laughs> is the wrong type of word. I'm going to say they're going to make a peg leg out of Popeye. This is awful. It is. It is. But and 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 much like what it what was the bill? It was the health care bill. What was the bill that Elizabeth Warren came out and said, you got us. Pass it before we read it. Or no, oh. that was Pelosi. What was it? The the health bill. It, yeah, no, it was the wasn't it the Inflation Reduction Act? Ah, uh, it was. Or, it was a while was ago. But whatever. That. Okay. This seems like you got to pass the bill before they'll let us read it. Nah, this is so bogus. But you see, this is regulatory action at its worst. Legislation through regulatory action at its finest. The court, the Supreme Court has already said it needs to uh, make sure that they do what they're supposed to do. What has the SEC got to do with climate change? They're overstepping their bounds. No, they really are. They really are. I mean, go go forth and monitor something that you're in, supposed to be doing. This is ridiculous. Yeah, monitor cryptocurrency. You know, I don't get it. Anyway. I'm with you. <laughs> hey, so much for logic. How about back to you? Well, no. So much for logic, but <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and switch over to finance. Uh, before we do that, though, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. As always, guys, uh, this podcast is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Go ahead and hit the description below. You can go ahead and uh, um, have access to all of the different um articles links timestamps everything that you're going to need um, is in that description below we've got a survey that we're running go ahead and click that you can go ahead um, and, and and contribute a little bit we're going to be rolling out a nice premium subscription or premium offering and we want uh, you the viewers valuable feedback on what exactly um, you guys want to see in that so check that out you can see that survey.energynewsbeat.com um, you can also hit us up on our, uh, our web application dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. Get it while you still can. Could be behind a subscription at some point. So check that out. We love the feedback. We appreciate it. Um, but I mean, pretty simple today, Stu. We only really saw one major thing, which was the EQT merger. So I'll get into that in a bit. Um, but first we had the S and P 500 drop, um, about a 10th of a percentage point. NASDAQ takes a little bit more at three tenths of a percentage point. Um, Bitcoin up five percentage points as we've been talking about over $72,000. Um, we saw oil prices stumble, you know, mainly off the back. Um, well, first, you know, uh, opened at somewhere around $78. We, we, we closed somewhere at 79 at 77 15. Um, remember markets roll over and we start trading again. You know, the close that you see happens at 1230 Eastern or 1130 central time. So since then we've actually risen, we're staying, we're trading here at about 5 PM central time at about 7807 natural gas. Um, take a, you know, is, is continued to trend it downward. It's trading at the lowest levels it has in 24 hours, uh, $1 uh, and 75 cents. Um, main reason for, for 
um, that rollovers. We saw that 80 mark, you know, something that we don't talk about much, but I need to start covering more frequently is the commitment of traders. The commitment of traders is a report that comes out every single week, which shows the positions of large head funds that actually are involved with trading oil, you know, who, tr who trade crude oil futures and natural gas futures and any commodity. It's the commitment of traders um, that, that are held for commodities. And what it showed last week was that there was a huge shorting of the oil markets. P uh, companies picked up record shorts on crude on uh there are short positions for U.S. crude and fuel options. What does that mean when you're covering shorts? Well, that's going to now drop the price because you're you're finalizing the repurchase of what was previously a bearish short. So it looks like we're not. It looks like that eighty dollar mark is going to act as a little bit of a top this week as people continue um, to sell off those repurchases um, or as they finally finish the repurchases. So remember, I had that backwards. Excuse me. I, I mean, I mentioned it backwards. When you're selling a short, you're selling it. You have to to repurchase it because you've leveraged it in the first place. You've had to borrow that share. So in order to give that share back to the person you borrowed it from, you have to go buy it on the open market. So as you do that, price goes up. Well, as we got to $80, we saw in the commitment of traders this week, well, we're actually out. All those bears have shorted out. There's none left. And so that's where you're seeing price roll off right there. So um, we'll start covering more um closely what's going on with commitment to traders. But that was a really interesting note um, that we saw on Friday and, and, and kind of the main reason we saw a little bit of a softening of a price um, Friday afternoon rolling into today. Um, hasn't really looked different, you know, no real news out of Israel or Ukraine, which sort of changes that geopolitical standing right there. Um, we will see um, this afternoon as you guys listen to this on Tuesday. Um the API will announce their crude oil inventory storage numbers. So we'll, we'll check to see where that goes. You know, the only other thing that I saw today was, was, was the big announcement out of EQT. They go ahead and reacquire Equitrans midstream. This will create a, a fairly vertically integrated gas company, um, quote unquote, that will compete on the global stage. Um, we, we, we do love the team over there at EQT. Uh, interesting move, though, you know, to kind of wind the clock back before we go and get into some of the numbers here. Equitrans was EQT's midstream business you know, for years, it was the original EQT midstream business. Um, they were a subsidiary of them, you know, EQT's team, you know, prior to the the merger with Rice Act with, or with Rice Energy Group, in which the Rice family kind of took them over. They went ahead and and um, had, you know, built up this midstream position uh, after the, the the merger with Rice Energy. These were, you know. You know, you know, an activist, an, an activist investor came in and basically said, "Hey, we need you to spin out the midstream business." And so the midstream business was spun out about four years ago, and now it's being rebolted on again in what really works out to be a, you know, I'm trying to find the actual price on it. It's a little bit difficult to find. I think it was twelve and a half billion dollars um, was the overall actual uh, acquisition price. Wow. Or, or excuse me, five point six billion for the acquisition. Um, but it's an all stock transition. Um, um, all stock, excuse me, um, merger or not merger, but it's an all stock transaction. There's about six billion of debt sitting on top of that, though. So that's hmm. where that eleven point five billion number comes from. You know, I I think what's interesting is the street didn't. I mean, I just you know the, the easiest thing to say is what did the street think today? Their stock got pounded by seven percentage points. It was down a full three dollars. Um, so that's seven, but it's almost ten wow. percentage points wiped off. Why? Well, I mean, I for me, I'm in favor of a vertically integrated, you know, natural gas company. Um, EQT's claiming that the cash flow from twenty. 25 to 2029 is going to pay for the merger inclusive of debt. I have a hard time believing that um, from the standpoint of, you know, you must be using the forward curve for natural gas. And I was, I was on a phone call today with a buddy of mine and we were just laughing about how, you know, people are using the forward curve and the fact that two years out, okay, oh, gas is projected to be 450. I mean, like, you don't know that the forward curve is rarely right. You know, right. you know, if you, I've, I, there's this, 
I forget the guy on Twitter. I I, I got to find him and shout him out. So I'll have to do that before the next show. But there's a there's a guy I follow on Twitter who does that, who shows actual price and then the forward curve at the time of those prices. And it's absolutely unbelievable in terms of how wrong the forward price is. So you've got a deal that, yes, <laughs> using the forward curve for natural gas, you may be able to say the cash flow will cover it. But in reality, will it? And did you just overpay for an asset yeah, that you oops. already owned? I saw a great comment on Twitter. Um, where was this? It was from this is from our buddy David Ramson Wood. Um, they DRW. shouldn't have spun it out. Yeah, you know, DRW. They shouldn't have spun it out originally. This feels like punishment to the fact that the only people who made money on the net transaction was management and bankers. Fun, Ooh. fun. So interesting. Again. Uh, I think the market sniffed that out because they got pounded today for something that probably should be fairly as EQT would claim transformational. But I think, you know, the signal through the noise is, you know, there was, this is just a, a four year transaction in which management and bankers got some nice fees on it. I mean, makes sense. I guess I'd take a fee. Yeah. Maybe they'll sponsor the show. Maybe, maybe we'll take a nice fee for that. Trust me. We'll be, a, it'll be a transformational sponsorship. <laughs> transformational. Trust me. Um, you got anything else? Oh no. Hey, I get to interview. Um, uh, let's see here. Paul Tice in the morning. He I is the author of race to zero, how ESG investing will crater the global financial system. I'm finishing up the book tonight. It's kind of, kind of crazy. Yeah, so. absolutely. So, all right, well, I'll go ahead and let everybody get out of here. We appreciate you guys for checking us out. World's greatest podcast, Energy Newsbeat. Check us out online, www.energynewsbeat.com. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.